Welcome back to the third episode of the 1969 Chrysler Newport four-door sedan with a 383 Magnum in it. In this episode, I want to take it on a 700-mile road trip, round trip, to the Grand Canyon. If you remember in the last episodes, we, Dad and me pulled this thing out of a yard. It had been sitting down in Sierra Vista for over 40 years. We got it running, we got it driving, we got it stopping, we put some tires on it, and that's it. Not even so much as a carb rebuild, didn't change the spark plugs, plug wires, nothing. This is completely original as is, as we pulled it out of the desert. But before I take it on that trip, there's a few things I wanna do. Over the weekend, Dad was at a car parts swap meet, and he found a brake booster for this car. Rock Auto, AutoZone, O'Reilly, nobody has it in stock. No one even shows a listing. So we wanna swap out the brake booster real quick. I'd like to figure out a heater situation because in Tucson right now, eh, it's cold, but not that cold. Anywhere else we go, especially north, is gonna be a lot colder than here. I'd like to mock up a heater, maybe. Another thing I wanna do is figure out an exhaust situation. because the exhaust on this car is totally shot. And at the exhaust shop, they want like 600 bucks just to put two mufflers on. I just can't spend that kind of money. So we got no time to waste. Let's start switching this booster around. That sure looks exactly. Here's the one that yeah. Dad found. Yeah, this little thing right here. That the four bolts. The uh, uh, look. It's even. Hold on. The let me turn this around. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. The position of the uh, the vacuum valve. Look at that rubber in there. That feels. This is a remanufactured one. I bet. rubber on this I mean that's just pitiful I think my mic can pick it up so I'm gonna just blow through this right now I could just blow through that <laughs> see how it comes back out it's holding vacuum and then when I let off it's pushing it back out so it's it's holding Yeah, it's holding. Oh, I don't think, uh... Different bolt pattern? It don't line up. It don't? No. I still don't think we're down yet. Oh, look, I, look, I, that's broke. Okay, so that comes out of there. This just comes right out of there. Boy, look at that. Whoa, that's nice. This one was freshly rebuilt or something, yeah. reman. Yeah. This one's beautiful. Oh, I see. That just, that goes in that. Here's the vacuum diaphragms that are inside those boosters, and you can see this one's tore up. I mean, bad. That's why it was leaking. Uh, this one, you can see, this one was recently remanufactured. Uh, this one's beautiful. So... <laughs> Uh, this rod was in the old one, in this one, because it's longer and it's got the hole for the bolt. So we switched this rod, we had to take it all apart to switch, this whole assembly is, is one. And we're going to actually put this rebuilt uh, diaphragm, because that's what makes it work, in the old casing, because it has the right bolt pattern, and it looks cooler. I mean, it looks like the factory one. Well, because it is. This is bad. 
that check valve. Uh -huh. Well, let's go ahead and switch that check valve too while we're at it. You see this? It's supposed to. You, you can uh -huh. suck, but it's not supposed to go backwards because that's what gives you three pumps. Even if there's no vacuum. If there's no vacuum, the motor's off, you're supposed to have three pumps. And it stores it in the booster. And it stores it in the booster. Right. And this one... That I one's working. That one's working. This one's not. This one's no good. Oh, that thing looks like it's over. There we go. So there's that. The marks are lined up there. Was yours bent? Rebuilt booster in 30 minutes or less. Feel it. Let's see. If we put it in reverse. Oh. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we're gonna figure out an exhaust situation for this car. I'll show you guys in a minute kind of what it looks like. If you're ever wondering what kind of tools we use, this is a Pittsburgh three-ton jack, low profile. Uh, we use six ton jack stands. I got links to all the necessities that we use in the description of this video on Amazon, like this three ton Pittsburgh jack, six ton jack stands, uh, our blue funnel, the kind of oil we use, the rechargeable shop light we use, the 180 piece DeWalt tool kit we use. gone at the tailpipe and the muffler is blown out you can see I mean it's just gone I'm gonna cut them off and see what size the pipe is and go to AutoZone and see if I can round up some stuff maybe some mufflers and some 45s to maybe route them in front of the rear wheels exhaust shop is just too expensive Not much going on there. Two and an eighth. So I got all my exhaust stuff. This is the AutoZone special. Everything here is from AutoZone. The 45s, the tailpipes, the hangers, the cherry bombs, all that is from AutoZone. I'm thinking I'm going to attach that pipe to the pipe that's on the car. We got our 45 right here that's going to go on the cherry bomb. We're going to have to extend it with our flex hose a little bit. Come on. And then we will weld this to the flex hose right about mm, yay there and i bought these self-tapping bolts to go from here to the frame so i can just you know screw it right in instead of drilling holes nutting and bolting it and all that these will just drill in and be secure i got two for each the exhaust shop it would have been six hundred dollars or travis's shop for 130 dollars and i'll just go ahead and put up the cost i have on the car here so far i paid 1250 bucks for the car 500 and some odd for the tires, and then Rock Auto and everything else. The other odds and ends, I can't remember. I think I've spent a total of like 23 or $2,400 on it so far. That's including registration, emissions, uh, all that.
So what I did there was just tack weld it so I could get everything in position all solid so I could set it underneath there, check it out, make sure everything was straight where I wanted it. And now I'm going to lay the, you know, the beads and make it permanent. She's all on there. So pumps. <laughs> Sounds pretty good though. Sounds pretty tough. Not bad. Power brakes. Not bad for some 12 inch glass packs. So the car is running rough already. Uh, I think it's because of the fuel filter. Uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right here. Yeah, I'll let you guys hear it too. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but like, it almost, I don't know, kind of looks like plaque buildup or something like that. It's like that varnish that's in the tank or what's left in the tank, so. Can hard, oop, heh, <laughs> can hardly blow through it. Yeah, I think that's our problem. redo the interior real quick before we leave and by redo I mean seat covers by that I mean moving blankets you guys be careful all right we'll be careful all right ready Okay. Another, you have another bag? Then of course, I gotta have the suitcase out of the 60s. <laughs> this little assist plunger is sticking. It's operated by vacuum. See? It's what initially turns the choke off when you start the car up. Isn't that cool? It's like a big old mountain right next to us. With all the cactus. It's pretty cool. So we stopped for our first bathroom break of the day. I wanted to check everything out, see how everything's going. And I lost my fan belt. I, I don't even know what happened to it. I didn't even hear it come off. I didn't hear anything happen. I have no clue what happened to that. I don't see it dangling around down here or anything. I don't know how it came off the fan and just left the entire unit as a whole. So you can still overheat even though it's cold. Uh, and I was checking the fuel filter out. There's a little bit of sediment down there in the bottom. It's not looking too bad yet. So we'll keep rocking with that fuel filter. There's a Napa like 0.3 miles away with a fan belt. <sighs> Fishing around the crank there. This to happen again. So 
So on these 383s, they actually have a half inch drive um, square hole you can put a ratchet in. That's why I've got two ratchets there. One, I'm holding tension on the belt, and the other one, I'm tightening two 916 bolts that hold that idler pulley in place right, to nice keep the belt tight. I also want to check the tranny fluid. The tranny pan has been dripping a little bit in that. Uh, the tranny cooler has a little drip, so we're a little bit low. Emily doing her makeup in there. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. This is our first gas stop. I think we're close to being in North Phoenix. I filled it up before we left. We'll see how many gallons it uses, divide the gallons it used by how many miles we went. Uh, I think it's gonna get 13. Oh, it already stopped. 7.8 gallons and we went, I don't know, probably 100 and some miles. I'll calculate it when we get back in the car. Is it really done? Where's your calculator app? 119 miles divided by 8.2. That's 14 and a half. That's almost exactly what I thought. 14, 15. We should be able to go 300 miles on a tank. Yeah, she got me hot Cheetos. She got the essentials. Yes. Ace mocha latte. All right, let's check under the car and see if anything stupid's happening. Uh oh. I can tell right now that's tranny fluid. All right, I want to just park away from everybody, but I am not sure if that was me or not. I see some kind of fluid right here. I'm seeing a lot of fluid down here. It might be leaking out of that tranny cooler. This is all wet. Everything underneath here is soaked. So what I'm gonna do is take these tranny cooler lines off, put a ton of uh, thread tape on them. And you know, honestly, I'll just be honest, I think this is my fault because this is an aluminum radiator with aluminum fittings on it. And when I put these fittings uh, back on, when I put the radiator in, I think I over tightened them and might have boogered up the threads. Not that I, oop, not that I cross threaded them. I just think I tightened it too tight because um, I, I didn't. I felt a little bit of resistance, but I was like, you know, I don't think they're tight, you know. But aluminum is just very delicate, and I think I might have uh, over tightened it a little bit. I might have slowed it down. I don't know if it completely stopped, but. Flagstaff, maybe about 20 30 miles outside of Phoenix, probably. But check this out, watch boom! Isn't that cool? It looks beautiful on camera, but if you ever live here in July and it's 110 115 degrees, it becomes a little less magic. If you look out there, you can see the saguaros are getting more sparse. Like, uh, zoom in on that guy right there. We got a lone ranger out there, we got Ranger Rick out there on his lonesome. Because we're going up in elevation right now, you can hear the cars kind of struggling. They got it. They only exist in like the perfect conditions. It's got to be hot and dry, and the elevation has to be low. Like as we go up this hill right here, 
you know, you just, you'll see less and less of them because the elevation, they just can't exist. So it says we're doing about 60. The odometer works, check it out. There we go. So I'm not gonna use the odometer to track our mileage. I'm gonna use the foam because the speedometer is hooked to a cable that screws into the transmission that has a gear ratio for the actual speedometer that's set to the original size tires that were on the car. The measurements of all the tires are different than they used to be. Even though these tires fit this car, they might be 5 or 10% off of the original size of the tire. The diameter is really what matters. The smaller the diameter of a tire, the faster the tire has to spin for you to be doing 65 or 70. The larger diameter tire you have, the slower it has to turn for you to be doing 65 or 70. These tires might be a, a hair bit bigger in diameter or a hair bit smaller in diameter than the factory original tires that came on the car. But even though all this stuff is working, it's probably not reading 100% correct. about 250 miles in we made it from Tucson to Flagstaff I want to check the brake fluid Let's see yeah it's I mean it's warm I, there's some pressure on that hose um, when we come back I want to check the brake fluid because the brakes I felt like they were pushing in uh, further than they were before this fuel filter uh, that's but it looks pretty decent it's not trashed so what do you say you want to get some food yes I'm so hungry so here we are all bundled up, right? I'm freezing. Look at this. Making me feel like a wimp, this guy. Shorts and a t-shirt. I love all these old buildings. Check this out. Charlie's Pub and Grill. I love that old sign too, Hotel Monta Vista. It's cool how they used to put the hotel signs right on top of the hotel with all like that skeleton holding it up. Sweet. The McMillan. This is where we're gonna eat, I think. I love restaurants and old, cool, historic buildings. My brake pedal started feeling kind of funky, so I took this off, and we are dry back there. That's not good. Um, Got to figure out what's going on, where it's where it's coming out at. Um, <clears throat> Got to see what wheel. So if you look under here, that side looks dry. It was the front reservoir. It was the one marked F. And if you look at this one, you can see that. It's damp around here, so I don't know if the wheel cylinder is leaking inside or it could be uh, my brake hose. I didn't tighten it up uh, tight enough. It could be leaking out of that copper washer. I don't know. I got to put fluid in it. So I'm going to fill it up and just keep an eye on it, see how fast it's leaking. Fill that up. We are on the side of the road right now. Travis just had us pull over because he saw a cool locomotive that he wants to check out. The car's over there. He does this all the time. Where's the locomotive? This powered the Industrial Revolution, bro. He said this powered the Industrial Revolution. Man in his train. It looks like it has white walls. This is cool. <laughs> Someone just honked at you. Alright, let's go. It's kind of cool seeing these mountains and these open plains here. You can see the snow on top and where the elevation is, where the snow just stops and turns into water. Almost feels like we're in like Montana or something. It's hard to believe we're still in Arizona. It's 
speedometer is starting to make noise. It'll probably start up again when we... I don't have my mic hooked up right now. We were just driving, you know. That lube inside them hardens up over time and then they start making noise. We're in the line to the end of the park. We've almost made it to the Grand Canyon. It's almost dark, so maybe if this line moves fast enough, we can get in there, park at the hotel, and then go check out that big crevice. <laughs> we made it. We're still so cold. Right in the nick of time. It's like right past sunset. There it is. Isn't it cool? Can you imagine walking up on this as a settler in a wagon or something? No. You cold? I'm freezing. All right, so it's the next morning. It's about 8.30. It's 30 degrees. Checking on the car right now while Emily's inside getting ready. The only thing I'm really concerned about is cold water leaks that develop overnight. I put a bunch of antifreeze in it, so... I don't know what that is. All right, not bad. A little bit of tranny fluid. All these drips are tranny fluid that sprayed all over the engine. I don't see any antifreeze on the ground. Not this. <sighs> yeah, we got some coolant in there. Just check the engine a while. Uh, if it would focus. All right, let's check it again. Hold on. Might need a little bit of oil. She's reading a little bit below the uh, parameters there. Check the brake fluid. Well, front reservoir is still full. I know it's the back one, but if you look here, R, F, right here, R, F. Uh, this is going to the rear, this is going to the front. That's how, when this was empty yesterday, I knew to check the fronts because these are marked. So, I don't know what that leak is, but we didn't lose any yesterday on the way up from Flagstaff to here, but it's definitely going to need to be checked. Something's going on with that wheel cylinder. Let's check the uh, power steering fluid. Yeah, I'll get you guys down in there. Yeah, there's fluid down in there, I see it. Can't check the tranny fluid until we're hot and in neutral, so that'll have to wait, but I'm sure it's gonna need a few quarts. It's, half of it's all over the engine. We'll put some of that good old 1540 diesel oil in there. I don't know where the oil went. Maybe it's burning some. I don't really see it leaking on the ground any, so it's probably burning it. My little blue funnel. <laughs> Look at you. Glad I left you under there. Boy, this thing's coming out like molasses. <laughs> it's, it's cold. Oh my gosh, it's draining out of this funnel. Like literal honey. Look at this parking lot though. Everybody is from everywhere, right? Like, what is that? California, California Michigan, oh, Michigan, Colorado. That one's Maine. That one's Maine. Maine that one's Colorado, Colorado Nevada, Nevada. Idaho, California, Florida over there. Where's this hillbilly from? Gosh, why would they drag that thing up here? I'm glad I'm not them. So I was reading that, and this is the only cabin here at the Grand Canyon that is original from the settlement days. This was built in 1895, it says, with V-notched logs. Yeah, you can see at the top, they're notched like a V. That's pretty cool that it's still here, the only remaining cabin. I guess you can stay in them. That's cool. Right next to the Grand Canyon. One more look in the morning before we leave. I just want to show you guys this because, I don't know, not everybody will make it here. <laughs> I'm king of the world! Like Titanic. It looks like a painting. It does look like, like a painting. Real. What's crazy is, is like, as it goes down, you can see, like you can see the layer of the earth. You can see that layer that layer like every layer has a color as it goes down it's insane just look how small he looks he's just on the lookout right below us right and he looks tiny but think about somebody down there that's a trailhead i mean just to show you how deep 
that is. It's just crazy. Moment of truth. Let's see if she'll start up cold. <clears throat> oh, I don't have the battery hooked up. Oh. Hold up. <laughs> Alright, so what I ended up having to do is take the air cleaner off and stick a screwdriver down here in this choke because this this choke wasn't wanting to come on. There's a pl vacuum plunger over here that helps open it. It's kind of stuck sometimes. You have to assist it. So now the choke is open, but it was staying closed and the vacuum wasn't enough to pull that plunger. So... Before we leave, all right, let's go check out. Stop to eat at this McDonald's here, right outside the park. I'm gonna check the tranny fluid because I know it's it's been spraying all over the inside of this. But I wanted to wait till the motor was in was hot, you know, and in neutral before I checked it. It's been running for a bit now, so yeah, it's slow. I just got a little bit on the manifold, that's why it's smoking. Yeah, we're good for now, I think. Let's hit the road. So we didn't even get literally a mile away from that McDonald's. The car died. I mean, we were going full steam ahead and it just, loss of power, it just quit midstream. So I don't know if, I don't know if the fuel filter got plugged up if we lost spark or what, but. I don't know how we could have ran out of gas. See all that crap in there? Let's see. Fuel filter's plugged. How do you unplug it? You put a new one on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Flow is that way, they're directional. They got an arrow on them. <clears throat> yeah, there's no way we could have ran out of gas by now. We have not gone, we haven't even gone close to 300 miles. Go ahead and crank it. All right, stop. Huh. I think we ran out of gas. I'll put maybe like half or three quarters of this in. 
Well, the fuel filter was plugged, and we ran out of gas at the same time, so... I don't want to put all this in because I still need this as a spare in case the fuel line gets gummed up because of this old tank. I need to be able to use the gas in here to run the car off. Give us some gas. Now you can see there's gas in there, it's pulling from the tank. Let's hurry up and get to a gas station. We made it to a gas station, we're filling up. I swear, I thought we were good on gas. I, I don't know, I guess I miscalculated how far we drove. Emily's cleaning uh, this half of the windshield. I'm gonna go in here and get a few things. I guess we were dead out. 17.6 gallons it took. Um, I put probably three gallons in it from my five gallon tank. So, I mean, yeah, we were out. Dude, I was swore we were good on gas. That's my bad. So we just pulled up to Williams, Arizona on our way back. We wanted to check this place out, Pete's Gas Station Museum. Look at those old visibles though. I love old visible gas pumps, dad and me, both. Gas station attendant used to come out, pump that handle. It was all mechanical, all analog, no electronics or anything except for the lights. Pump it, it would pump that visible tank full and you could see there your gallon markers. I don't know if you can see that. It's one, you see one, two, three, four, five. And then the handle would just gravity feed it into your tank that's why they were so tall because they didn't have pumps in them or anything no nothing i'm sure quite a few of you know that but i still think it's interesting see this used to be a shop you see that that orange thing right there those four legs that's a car lift look at all those signs in there sign, no mask zone no mask zone <laughs> yes sir i'd probably like the guy that owns this oh that's cool grand canyon hotel Look at that big old neon sign on that building. Big old Canyon Club sign on the stilts there. Since 1891, that historic plaque there says this was made in 1892 and it's the oldest hotel in Arizona. Pretty cool. Emily found a Christmas tree. Isn't that cool? That's huge. They stole that from the Rockefeller Center. Here was the original route of Route 66. It was, was like the first major American highway. Chicago, all the way down through all the major cities, Williams to Los Angeles. So we are right there. And there is Jerome. This place has more hotels than actual businesses. Look down there. The Lodge, Motel, Travel Lodge, another inn, America's Best Value. This is a hotel. There's the Grand Canyon Hotel. I mean, there's like 20 hotels right here on this strip. We drove to Williams. We drove uh, probably right outside Flagstaff, and I just filled up again. And probably we ran 90, 95 miles, and I went through over a half a tank, 12.2 gallons. I filled up just to be safe, but that's just crazy. When you average it out, that's like eight, eight and a half miles to the gallon. Uh, that's absolutely horrendous. And the only thing I can think of is that, you know, these carburetors, they got jets in them. You know, when we were tuning it down in Tucson, we were at 2,000 feet elevation. Well, now we're at, you know, 7,000 feet elevation. That's a big change. That difference in elevation, the air is thinner up here, and it could be messing with the air-fuel mixture, and that could be why we're getting such bad gas mileage. I mean, I swear I calculated it like two or three times, and I'm gonna fill up in Phoenix, and from Phoenix to Tucson, I'm gonna see what kind of mileage we get because Phoenix and Tucson altitude isn't that much of a change, so. I don't know why it would not have oil. That oil, that oil light comes on if you don't have oil pressure, but I checked the oil before we left. The oil light came on as soon as we were pulling into the uh, parking lot. If the oil light comes on, that means there's no oil pressure, but I mean, I checked the oil before we left uh, the Grand Canyon and I don't think any's leaked out, not on the ground, I've been checking, so. We're at the Brass Armadillo. It's like the biggest antique mall in Phoenix, and when we come back out, we're gonna check the oil, see if there's any missing, I don't know. I've been on the lookout for one of these Hamilton Beach milkshake makers, but this one, you can tell it's a reman, it's, it's plastic. The old ones were steel. This is cool, I see this a lot in antique shops. They'll have a black light on this. This is uranium glass, and when you put a black light on it, it shines like that, and that's how you know you have uranium glass. Oh, what are these? Are these old milk glasses? 
I always like finding old milk glasses. Where's this one from? Johnson Bros, Virginia, Minnesota. Fresh pasteurized milk and cream. I always liked these old milk glasses just because it shows like how local everything in the United States used to be. Dairy farming used to be local. I think in Arizona, uh, there's only like three certified dairy farmers left that are, that are individual, not like Shamrock Farms. Dairy farming is almost extinct among, you know, mom and pops. Look at this shirt I found. This is an old Coca-Cola work shirt. It's pretty sweet. Look at that, Unitog, Union Made in USA. Uh, man, back when we used to take pride in things. I almost missed this. This is an old Kenmore washing machine. More delicate fabrics, cottons, linens, denims. Look at that, off on. That's so freaking cool, an old ringer washer. And they have some uh, Salvo pre-measured detergent tablets. These are cool. It's Lady Kenmore's, pink and white. Oh, pfft. not for sale. Why is it in your booth then? This is the Brass Armadillo in Goodyear. Uh, it's kind of like a outskirts of the Phoenix area. This place is huge. Easily the biggest antique store, shop, whatever, flea market in Phoenix. First, it's I gotta open. check the oil and see if that oil light was coming on for any particular reason or not. It's a little low. Must be uh, using oil. There you go. We're about home, we're seeing what the final mileage count is. One of my taillights went out, I don't know when that happened. Alright, she's clicked. oop. Well, 12.2 gallons, we went 124, 125 miles, that's 10 miles to the gallon. I don't know what happened to our gas mileage. On the way from Tucson to Phoenix, we were getting 15. Something happened, I don't know what. Well, I think we made it. I know it's dark. I'm sorry if you guys can't see everything. It's about nine o'clock at night. We just got in. Rebuilding and keeping everything humanly possible. We went 700 miles in Jerome and a couple snags along the way. It did good, it did the whole thing. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys wanna stick around, I'll show some pictures of the, the trip. Thanks for watching.